The United States, Russia, and China all tested new super-fast hypersonic munitions, escalating a global competition for weaponry that can strike farther and harder than ever before and potentially defeat existing defenses. Iran has joined the club of countries that can produce ramjet engine, a sophisticated technology in the aerospace industry, thanks to the efforts of a knowledge-based company. Despite decades of sanctions and the current maximum pressure imposed on Iran, the country today is standing higher than some other countries in various fields of science and technology and has taken major steps in these fields. It will never be forgotten that the youths of Iran stood in the way of strong barriers of sanctions by other countries and with a double effort managed to keep the country's industries abreast of innovative ideas. One of the achievements these young people made was designing of an Iranian ramjet engine. A group of knowledge-based elites and activists working in the field of eco-technology and innovation have decided to use the country's aviation industry to circumvent the imposed sanctions and give the next generations a gift of Iranian industry. As Hossein Perfarzaneh, head of the Iranian jet engine team, says, ramjet engines show up speeds of up to 500 km per hour, but they can also fly at supersonic speeds. According to him, the engine has been designed by Iranian specialists and built by a knowledge-based company. The know-how of designing this type of engine was earlier possessed by a handful of advanced countries, but now the Islamic Republic of Iran has joined these countries by producing this ramjet engine. A ramjet is a form of air-breathing jet engine that uses the engine's forward motion to compress incoming air without an axial compressor or a centrifugal compressor. As ramjets cannot produce thrust at zero airspeed, they cannot move an aircraft from a standstill. A ramjet-powered vehicle, therefore, requires an assisted takeoff like a rocket assist to accelerate it to a speed where it begins to produce thrust. These engines are used in the aviation industry and are used in almost all aircraft today. Ramjets can be particularly useful in applications requiring a small and simple mechanism for high-speed use, such as missiles. Weapon designers are looking to use ramjet technology in artillery shells to give added range. They have also been used successfully as tip jets on the ends of helicopter rotors. The Russian and Chinese hypersonics tests were the most dramatic. But the much quieter American trial pointed toward a much more immediate and widespread transformation of military capabilities than the Russians or Chinese are likely to achieve. The world's armies have long-eyed faster munitions, especially faster munitions, that also are maneuverable. Swifter, nimbler rockets could strike with less warning and evade missile defense systems. Speedier, more streamlined artillery shells could travel farther and impact with greater destructive force. Most experts agree, if a weapon can travel at least five times the speed of sound, it's hypersonic, although some say the munition must be maneuverable too, to be effective. In late December, Russian President Vladimir Putin announced that the Kremlin had tested the new Avangard hypersonic rocket. The test was completely successful, Putin said. All technical parameters were verified. A Vanguard is a hypersonic glide vehicle. It boosts into the upper atmosphere atop a rocket then detaches and glides toward its target, performing small maneuvers en route. The Kremlin announced it would fit a Vanguard with an atomic warhead and deploy it alongside old-style intercontinental ballistic missiles. 
but as a delivery system for nuclear warheads, a Vanguard doesn't actually enhance Russia's military arsenal. That's because Russia's ICBMs already possessed the range to strike targets all over the world and the speed to evade all but the luckiest shot by American missile defenses. Indeed, ICBMs in the terminal phase of their flight already are hypersonic. A Vanguard flies lower in the atmosphere than an ICBM does and might be faster than an ICBM is in early phases of flight. The practical differences end there. I don't think this system brings any new capability that the existing weapons like ICBMs don't have, Pavel Podvik, an independent expert on the Russian military, told the Daily Beast. James Acton, a weapons expert at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace in Washington, D.C., said a nuclear-armed hypersonic weapon is no more threatening than an older ICBM is. What does concern me is a very long-range conventionally armed system, he added. Unlike a nuke. A conventional weapon might actually get used in scenarios short of a world-ending apocalypse. That would pose a real new threat to the United States, Acton said. It's China, not Russia, that's making what seem the biggest strides toward fielding a non-nuclear hypersonic weapon. But even China's new weapon is less fearsome than it might appear to be. Ironically, its own sophistication holds it back. Around the same time Putin announced the results of the Avangard test, a photo appeared online that showed a Chinese warship sailing the open ocean. While armed with an electromagnetic railgun that could be capable of firing shells at hypersonic velocity. A railgun propels its projectiles by way of magnetic force, as opposed to explosive powder charges that conventional guns use. China's railgun first appeared in January 2018 in a photo of the Chinese Navy landing vessel Heiyangshan, while the ship reportedly was at a facility in Wuhan on the Yangtze River. A large cannon was visible on Heiyangshan's forward deck. In March, Chinese state media confirmed the cannon was an experimental railgun. The December photo seemed to confirm that the gun had undergone at-sea tests, making it the first such weapon to do so. The U.S. Navy since 2012 has been developing its own railgun, but as of early 2019 the weapon had yet to go to sea. That doesn't mean the Americans weren't working on super-fast weapons, however.